ओके टुडे वी आर जस्ट डिस्कसिंग योर डॉक्यूमेंटेशन बिकॉज वट आई वॉन्ट फ्रॉम यू वेन यू आर प्रजेंटिंग थिंग्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ डायग्नोज फॉलो अप बिकॉज प्रीवियसली फॉर थ्री फोर सिक्स मंथ आई वॉज इन दैट रेगुलर आई थिंक दैट बेड साइड टीचिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दैट गिव यू assessment uh, in a way that you you really the things which you need to know are how to analyze data simple recall is not enough for that you need to compile whatever information you have gathered and come up with single conclusion and in that conclusion you should be telling diagnosis as well as plan <clears throat> both short term and long term and these are the things which may be different in different patients and even different people make different plan according to their analysis so this when you even you are presenting wrong but at least you are concluding that i think this is wrong with this patient and for me this is the solution these two things are very important when you are assessing any clinical assessment that identifying present problem usually when we ask someone by diagnosis care they say ms ms is not a diagnosis ms is the background clinical structural pathology whatever your patient is having what is present problem that you had have to identify similarly patient with lv dysfunction you're saying diagnosis is heart failure heart failure is the background condition he is having with what problems he came to the hospital this is the thing i want when i ask you diagnosis so whenever you are presenting a case and you are asked to say what's the diagnosis that means i want to know what is the present problem with which this patient came to the hospital and certainly once you identify that problem you will able to offer solution and solution is multi prong short term intermediate term long term so what we'll discuss we'll try to cover common clinical problems with which patient came here and what we expect in those patients and how to really identify them now you really uh, have uh, uh, st elevation because most st elevation goes to straight straight away cath lab and step down so you usually are uh, do we have anything to rub ye to pakistan ka nizam chal raha hai board hai लेकिन लव अब हम उसको डिफरेंट चीजों को डील करते हैं बट यू यूजुअली फेस बट काइंड ऑफ पेशेंट्स हु आर नॉन एस टी ए सी एस इज एंड दीज आर द पेशेंट्स हु आर एडमिटेड विद सो कॉमन वन इज चेस्ट पेन एंड इन दिस चेस्ट पेन समटाइम्स यू डू हैव पेशेंट हु इज हैविंग प्रोबेबल एसीएस definite acs we very rarely have non cardiac patients involved so that you have to first identify are you dealing with probable or definite when you are saying that it's definite then you need to answer these three thing unstable angina non st or st elevation and if you are unclear you can say in combining these two as non st yes but when you are saying someone non st acs or unstable angina that means you already have classified them as definite acs some misconception people think that if your trop is negative ecg is in showing anything this patient is just unstable angina no you need to have definite typical ischemic symptoms for that so you are left with just clinical evidence 
to diagnose your patient with and this is the most difficult patient to diagnose because you haven't have any objective evidence with this patient. So chest pain, I want to know these three things. And sometimes this thing is concomitant with other problems like a patient came with pulmonary edema. Now we need to know is there any acute ischemia along with this pulmonary edema or not? So you have to identify this thing. Like along with pulmonary edema, your patient is having symptoms of ischemia, ECG changes of ischemia or any cardiac marker suggestive of ischemia. But in failure, your markers may be borderline. So then this marker always dependent on other concomitant things, ECG changes or symptoms. If it's pure, just borderline or trends of those markers, then you have to follow those markers. So that's very important when you're dealing other things. So this we have covered chest pain. So whenever you have a patient with chest pain, I want to know these three things. Probable, definite, if definite, what it is at present. Aap aksar present kar dete hai. This patient one week back had ST elevation MI. He readmitted again and you are still saying it ST elevation. No, now you have to give present issue. Post MI angina, new non ST on superimposed pre existing ST elevation, or you think it's probable ACS because sometimes this is a very high risk patient. So you want to. Similarly, when you have a patient with SOB, then first you have to identify cardiac or non-cardiac. The number of time patient came to us with evidence of like even pre-existing LV dysfunction, but this time he is having full-fledged ongoing bronchospasm severe and once you identify auscultate and everything to come up and in every week I even in OPD I find three four patients in whole week which are referred even with normal LV function with SOB because considering it to be cardiac SOB and we examine them they are all having bronchi all over and it's pure asthma. So that thing you will get from the history someone is having no background no ischemia no PND just exertional SOB which is increased in this weather but then you examine them so you have to be very clear in auscultating. I personally believe in a, card a cardiologist must need how to auscultate just more than auscultation of the heart because auscultation of chest helps you in making acute decisions. Heart ki auscultation jo hai wo sirf diagnosis ke liye. It's not for management purposes unless and until some new change happen into it on pre-existing. But chest auscultation, if you can't auscultate and come up with conclusion what's happening with the chest, you miss a lot of acute management things. So that's it's very important to auscultate. But once you have admitted this patient as a cardiac, then you need to give me, is it pulmonary edema or something else? If pulmonary edema, what is the reason behind it? And reasons are commonly HEF, REF or HEF, F, a person with reduced or and then you have to give me etiology as well of either. If you have diagnosed her or him as HEF, PEF, give me the etiology, hypertensive heart disease, some valvular problems hypertrophic cardioma, whatever. Similarly, if this is have ref, again you have to give me diagnosis. And in both these condition, along with diagno diagnosis, I want aggravators. So what do you mean by aggravators? Like uh, non-compliant medications? Yeah, LRT. thing which you have to assess there must be something as an aggravator and that is usually these kind of things non-compliance additional infection ongoing ischemia inappropriate medication sudden rise in pressures any rhythm issues that you have to judge in your patient what's have what what's new happening 
which has made this patient pre-existingly stable HFPEF or HFREF. Now it's unstable with pulmonary edema. So that you have to tell. Otherwise, these are 70-80% of the time we are dealing these two things, either in combination or separately. Along with it, you sometime can have patient in wards, syncope, palpitation, which turn out to be whatever rhythms you have, syncope, kyun hui, koi cardiac hai, non cardiac hai, if it's cardiac, then reason, reason mein phir etiology bhi, bradyarrhythmia arrhythmia hai, obstruction hai, LVOT, jo bhi hai, aur phir jis bhi wajah se wo cheez hoi hai, uski etiology bhi chahiye. Is se ahead ke phir humar paas zyada cases nahi hote, zyada workup cases hote hai, so even those workup cases, you need to clear why this patient was admitted. Pre-existingly having ASD, now it's for workup for device closure. Pre-existingly MS, now workup for PTMC. So I need single liner that you should be telling me that this is the reason for admission in this patient. What about this? The patient is having symptoms along with the MS. Can we write the patient is having? Uh... Like some of, some of these patients may be admitted for emergency with symptoms. Yes. Or some other problem, even stroke can be a presentation of MNS, SM, uh, MS. So, if you think there is some additional clinical problem along with this in this admission, not a pure elective admission without symptom, you can mention that. This is my diagnosis that this patient is having intermittent pulmonary edema or increased filling pressures because of severe MS, and this time we are working up, you can. Second thing is follow. What's the time? Ten minutes. Oh. Minutes. Follow up. A number of patients are already diagnosed. Then I want follow up. Follow up. Me, आपने मुझे क्या देना है? Review of symptoms. Review of signs. Review of investigation. And review of treatment. sign review. sign review treatment review. So whenever you are standing on a patient in the morning, he is pre-existingly admitted, but you have to look for <coughs> symptoms review means what was the status of the symptoms with which this patient came. Any new symptoms are appearing. Similarly, signs, pre-existing sign kya the, abhi kya status hai. Investigations kya gain thi, kya jani chahiye, kya mazid aapko chase karni hai. Aur jab tak in tino cheezon ko properly assess nahi kiya jayega, aap isko proper kar hi nahi sakte. So, and sometimes in cardiology, you need this follow-up. 6 hourly, 4 hour hourly, 1 hourly, depending on patient's clinical condition. So you have to identify in the morning what are those patients who need frequent follow-ups to review treatment according to the status of these signs, symptoms and investigations and you have to order different things accordingly even in investigation according to that. So ye follow-up mein honi chahiye cheeze. इसके साथ साथ हमने कुछ बातें की हैं कि आपने नोट्स क्या-क्या लिखने हैं वो बता दिया गया आपको बताया है किसी ने क्या नोट्स लिखने जी पोस्ट राउंड नोट्स आपने लाज़मी लिखने हैं जैसे आज का राउंड हुआ है तो आज के वो सारे हर इंडिविजुअल को अपने इन टर्म्स ऑफ डायग्नोसिस मैनेजमेंट प्लान व्हाटएवर ये कुछ बुनियादी चीजें कल की तैयारी के लिए मैं कह रहा हूं बड़ी-बड़ी punishments hongi kal ke liye <laughs> abhi tak hamari punishments thi were related to simple recall things name nahi likha ya wo nahi likha ya aapne english bol di now after this lecture you will be penalized according to the content and your presentation as well if you are clear cut out of the context in your presentation you will be penalized
अपने फिर वही गलती की जो मैं यहां पे बता रहा हूं कि आपने नहीं करनी है ठीक है 